Hi everyone, my name is Sophia Garcia-Smith. I have been teaching pre-K through second grade for the past 22 years. I have been a Seesaw Certified Educator for the past eight years, and I'm excited today to show you some tips and tricks on how to test fluency in your classroom using Seesaw. Here's a simple way for your students to do a fluency check right in the Seesaw Journal. I'm gonna start with just doing the green plus button. When your students are in the class, they'll click the green plus button, and I like for them to use the drawing tool. So they'll click on the drawing tool. Now I have a folder in my classroom, a binder, that has all of the fluency pages from letter A to Z. Right now, my school is using reading A to Z, but they also have a fluency check built into their reading curriculum. So you can use whichever fluency check your uh, district or your school uses. So for today, I'm going to show you how they just simply go to the fluency folder, which will have their name on which list they will be taking a picture of. They'll click on the photo icon. They will click on the photo. They will hold the paper up. They will take a picture of the fluency check that they're going to do. They will click on the record button as they are recording their fluency. Kim's flowers. Kim went to pick flowers for mom. She walked into the field where the flowers grew. They'll continue until they're done and then they will click on the done button. They'll click the green check when they're finished and they'll automatically go into their journal. Oh, I forgot to show you this. This is the folder. I have a fluency folder that they would be putting it in so that it's easy for me to find. Once the post is in the journal, as a teacher, I will simply check this on my time, which I love about Seesaw. Click the three dots and I can edit the post. And I'm gonna show you how I do this two different ways. So here is the student's fluency that they are submitting. I can go to add a page and then I am gonna upload a rubric that I already have on my desktop that I use for fluency. So here it is and I'll simply add it as a second page. What this does for me is it keeps a running record of the student's sample, and now I have a rubric that is grading that sample. So as I'm listening to it, I can go ahead and I can mark this up, I can add the accuracy numbers, and I can circle where they were on their target rate. I will click the green check button, and that will be the fluency for that day. Now, how do the students find out if they've passed that uh, level and if they're moving on to the next. I'll simply go to the comment section and I'll type in, great job, move to level G, or I'll say, uh, let's try this one more time. So the following week, they will go back to the same reading level and try again to meet their goal. I'll click post and students know that before they go to the binder with all of the reading passages that they would check on this um, comment on the last post. Again, simple and easy to find if they just click on the folder, go to fluency, and then they would see the post that was there and um, the comments that were left. So quick and simple way to do this using the green plus. I'm going to show you a second way that I use fluency checks in my classroom using the activities button. If you go to add and you click on the activities button, I have already created a fluency passage F activity. When I click on it, I'm gonna to go to edit so we can go through the parts. I've simply named it fluency passage F. I've written some simple directions for the students to click on the microphone, read the passage, and then click on the green check when they're finished. As the template, I've added the passage for that letter. So this is level F. On the second page, what I've done is I've already incorporated the uh, rubric that I'm using for this fluency passage. So it's already there and ready to go. I'm going to click the green check button, and then I'm just going to save this, and now I can assign this to whatever student I want. This is a quick and simple way if you want to create an activity in advance and not have the students take a picture. But what I do love about the green check and the plus button is that students are keeping up on their own with the simplicity of whether they're staying on one letter or whether they're moving on to the next letter. I don't have to worry about assigning every single week. So I prefer the green plus button, but I thought this was another great alternative to share with you. 
There are so many things that I love about Seesaw, and this is probably one of the most powerful that has worked in my classroom. Cloning myself and allowing me to spend time with students that need one-on-one -on -one attention allows me to create independent centers like my Fluency Center. I hope these tips help you and have a great day.